Okay, let's dive in. Imagine this. It's September 2023, and you're a seismologist, right? Anywhere on Earth. And you start seeing this, well, this really bizarre signal on your equipment, mm -hmm. an ultra-low frequency vibration showing up globally, and it just stays mm -hmm. for nine solid days. Yeah, nine days. And then, just to make it weirder, after it faded, it came back about a month later. Well, uh, definitely not your standard earthquake. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not an obvious volcano. It was this global hum. A real puzzle. Right, a puzzle. And the sources we looked at, they actually traced this hum back, back to one specific really remote place in this incredible sequence of events. So that's our mission for this deep dive. What was this signal? How on earth did they pinpoint the source? And maybe most importantly, what does it all tell us? Okay, so let's start with the signal itself. Our sources describe it as a very long period seismic signal, uh, VLP for short. VLP, so really slow vibrations. Incredibly slow. The sources pinpoint the frequency at 10.88 millihertz. That's, hmm. well, it's way, way slower than the shaking you'd feel from a typical earthquake. It's this deep planetary rumble almost. Okay, deep planetary rumble. And tracking that led researchers where exactly? All the way to East Greenland, specifically a place called Dixon Fjord. Dixon Fjord. In Greenland, that seems unexpected for a signal detected worldwide. Right. It's not the first place you'd think of. And the sources mentioned something kicked it off there, something uh, pretty dramatic. Yeah, they do. The initial trigger seems to have been two big landslides inside the fjord. Landslides. And yeah. these weren't small slides, big enough to displace a lot of water and actually cause localized tsunamis right there within the fjord. Okay, landslide tsunamis in the fjord, that makes local sense. But those are usually, you know, relatively quick events. How does that explain a vibration felt globally for nine days straight? Ah, that's the crucial bit, according to the sources. The landslides and tsunamis, they were like striking a bell. They set things in motion. But the real source of that long, persistent hum wasn't the splash itself. It was something called a seiche. A seiche. Explain that. Like water sloshing. Exactly like that. Imagine the fjord is this huge, long bathtub. The tsunamis basically got the water sloshing back and forth, end to end. The standing wave of the seisha just kept going, resonating. So wait, the rhythmic sloshing back and forth of this huge amount of water yeah. in one remote fjord, that motion itself created a seismic wave strong enough to travel through the Earth. That's what the evidence points to. And be picked up by instruments all over the planet. That's kind right. of mind-blowing. It is pretty amazing. How did they confirm it? How did they know it was that specific seisha causing the global hum? Right, because correlation isn't always causation. But here, the sources say they used satellite data. It was an inference, basically, linking the seismic signal with what they saw from space. And they specifically mentioned using NASA's SWAT satellite mission. SWAT. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Surface water and ocean topography. That's its job, right? Measuring water levels. Precisely. So, with SWAT data, they could literally see the water level oscillating in Dixon Short. They could measure the height changes, the timing of the sloshing. And it matched. It matched. <laughs> they could directly correlate the motion of that seisha, its frequency, its timing, with the VLP seismic signal being recorded globally. That was the smoking gun, so to speak. Okay, let me try and connect the dots here for everyone listening. You have these big landslides in this remote fjord in Greenland. Yep. They cause local tsunamis. These tsunamis start this massive, continuous sloshing the seisha inside the fjord. Mm -hmm. And that persistent sloshing generates this very specific, very slow seismic vibration. The 10.88 millihertz signal. And crucially, satellites like SWAT could actually measure that sloshing, confirming it perfectly matched the timing and frequency of the signal picked up by seismometers worldwide. You got it. And the sources really emphasize the significance here. This was apparently the first time they could directly observe this whole process, the SACA generating a global signal using satellite altimetry like SWAT. So it gave them new direct proof. Exactly. New insights into this link between what happens with water on the surface, even in remote places, and seismic signals felt across the entire planet. It sort of connects surface water dynamics and deep earth vibrations in a new way. Wow. Okay. So wrapping up this deep dive then. Okay. We followed this weird global hum all the way back to Dixon Fjord in Greenland. Quite the journey. Yeah. Uncovered this chain reaction, landslides, tsunamis, this persistent satyr, and then the satellite confirmation nailing it down. From a quiet fjord to a planetary pulse. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Like, why is this story so intriguing for you listening? Does hearing about this change how you view things happening in far off places? 
Do you think differently now about how the Earth's water and rock are connected? It definitely leaves you with something to chew on. You know, just how interconnected are all these Earth systems, really? Mm -hmm. That an event seemingly contained in one fjord can send out these vibrations felt literally around the world. It's a pretty profound thought.